Hello and welcome to the fourth episode of the Project Mbappe podcast with me, Sean Conlon and Marcelo Grassa. We're coaches and scouts with Premier League clubs and we've been involved in the journeys of hundreds of players who've signed for academies and many who've made careers in football. On this podcast, we'll be speaking with well-known footballers and parents with children in academies about the football journeys of their children and what they are doing to help them achieve their potential. We're looking to discover if there's a secret formula which can guarantee your child making it as a professional footballer. Does Project Mbappe really work? Today's guest is Perry Mitchell. Perry is the father of Khalil. Khalil is thought by many to be the best player in the country for his age. He is signed to Chelsea's under nines and also had offers to sign with pretty much every Premier League team in England. In this episode, we will find out exactly what Perry did with Khalil to help him achieve such ability. How much was due to environment and training and how much is just down to nature. Perry, welcome to the Project Mbappe podcast. Um, just to get started, um, Khalil has recently joined Chelsea. What has that last year been like for you? Um, I think the last year was, it's been not normal because of COVID. So, well, I think a usual year for a signing season, a lot that would have usually happened didn't happen. So it's been more focused on training and just trying to keep his levels up and trying to keep pushing him. Yeah. I didn't want him, I didn't want him to lose any time because there was a lot that the boys weren't getting, like regular games and things that, um, contribute to their development so the focus was more just keeping him going towards the end that's when it got a bit tricky when because it was almost like for parents we didn't get to experience any clubs to really make a decision okay only Chelsea was allowing us to view sessions oh right so okay. it's like a lot of parents are making a decision without seeing any training or anything oh. so it, it, was, it was it was a tricky year okay yeah what was the type of conversations that you were having with clubs? Were, were you finding that they were putting pressure on you? They, they don't directly put pressure, but if you're, like, unless you're cold, you want to, cold hearted, you want to feel some because yeah. you build relationships with different people at different clubs. And if you're not blind, you see some coaches have helped develop your son or some coaches have given them this or that. Yeah. So you might feel a bit of loyalty or what have you. So I think you can create the pressure yourself, mm. but you just got to do what's best for the for your child at the end of the day. So just to give a bit of context and background for the, the listeners. So with academy football, before you sign for a professional club, the earliest you can sign is under eights. Yeah, the end. Yeah, so towards the end of year three at school. And up until that point, the the top players is common, especially in London, that they would train with a few clubs. Yeah. So can you talk about from under seven and under eight, wh how many teams was Khalil training with? Um, under sevens, he was with about, he was going to three academies slash four. Okay. Um, by the time under eights came, I'd cut it down to three. But it wasn't because of COVID yet yeah, again, yeah. it wasn't like he was doing three clubs. Okay. So there was not everything was always on. Some it was just Very it was, sporadic. Yeah, it was yeah. a mess. It was, it was a bit of a mess, if you get me. So, so what what were the clubs? He was by under eights, he was doing Chelsea, Tottenham and Crystal Palace. And were quite a few of the other kids doing the same thing pretty much. Yeah, some some kids were doing more. All right. <laughs> Which for me I thought it was too much. By then, you kind of you kind of know what you want, or you at least have two in your head. But then, for example, out of the three, the two in my head changed a few times. Oh really? Yeah, it's like every time you have a combo with one, your your mind can change. Oh god! <laughs> because literally, no one's gonna tell you something that doesn't benefit your child. So you have to literally be open to to, to whatever the opportunities are. Yeah. Literally. How did how did you come to the decision with with, with Khalil? Um, a lot of it ended up boiling down to the groups, okay, and then what I thought he needed for the next 
year or two. So some clubs, they'll talk to you about further on, maybe about even, not saying that they're guaranteeing you first team or anything, but they can see that and what have you. But for me, what was more important was next year. Because if you look five years down the line, you might not get there. Yeah, It's like being in a tournament and looking at the final before you played the semis. Mm. So each step for me was important. So next year was the most important step. So if I put it in some context, um, Khalil's under, he's going into under nines where the format of him playing was still going to be seven aside. He's good enough to play nine aside. He can manage playing nine aside with two years up or what have you. But I thought it was too soon for him to take that step. So I thought it'd be better for him to have another year or two playing the best seven aside that he could, if you get what I'm trying to say, or training with the best boys that he could. So I kind of went down that path in the end. A lot boiled down to the group that it was going to be in. I think that's what was important, to okay. keep the group from competitive. I didn't want him to be a big, or to feel like a big fish or anything. Yeah. Is that where the parents start talking to one another and, or does that happen? Um, I think once everyone's signed, parents got yeah. a bit more friendly with each other, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, before that, are you in Before that, it was a bit, hey, was a bit more, really? yeah. Yeah, okay. it's a bit oh, more. Oh, wow. So then how, how do you determine how, how the group's going to end up? If... Well, you kind of realise who's picking where. Okay. And I think I was kind of one of the last to make a decision. So I kind of got to see who was going where. Uh. So that's what it boiled down to as well. Um, was there going to be any challenges in the group that he needed to overcome or so I thought that was the better route because it's a long journey it's 10 years so for him to get given I look at it as 10 years because you could potentially debut at 18 um, and he's 8 so it was where is he going to have to fight a bit more and because of the character of Khalil I, like you know your kid innit yeah. I think that was better for him I didn't, if he's somewhere where it's a bit too, yeah, you're really good, Khalil, and... Coast. I, yeah, I think he, his levels will drop. I think he, he loves the challenge. He's up for it more. The harder the challenge is, the more you get from him. Not saying he always overcomes it, but the mm. more you get from him. Mm. So, taking it back a step, what age did he start football? Um, the first place I took him was about two. Was it? It was like... I think it's called Tiny Tots, but they yeah. literally, they have them running from hair to hair and kicking a ball in the goal. Okay. But he was the littlest there. And I noticed he was getting to the ball before everyone else. Okay. Because it's, like, it's like a race. They're all in a line. So I thought, all right, he's a bit quick. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the first kind of impression I got. And then from then, I would just watch whatever he's doing. And it's like, he outgrew that in about three weeks. Yeah. So then I found somewhere else, which was in Battersea. But I can't, for the life of me, I can't remember what this place was called. And it was better. But then after he was there for about a month and he's the only one coming in football gear. Some of them are in wellies and jeans. Oh. Even though the drills are all right and what yeah. have you. So some of the kids are running around with cones on their heads. And yeah. so the environment, he was already very much, whatever the coaches want him to do yeah. at like two, three, I think he was about, about three by then. Whatever the coach wanted to do, he was trying to do it. So yeah. I'm just, I'm looking at his environment. If you're not in an environment where other people are trying to do what you're doing, yeah. I started thinking, could he end up running around with a cone on his head in two weeks? Mm. Because he's copying the other kids. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. At, so, at, this, at this stage, did you have it in your mind that you wanted him to be a footballer? Um, I wasn't ignorant to the fact that being a footballer isn't, is a better path for him. Um, so in my head, it was always worse ways, even if you're not a great footballer, um, you could play in like league, nowadays you can play in like league one and still have a decent life, be on a decent salary. So it was always something that if it was, if it was possible, I wouldn't, I'd push him down that way. It, I don't think, even though in my head, I remember I had a combo with a friend before he was even born and I was saying, yeah, look, the boys, football. The, like, I looked at it as a trade, like no different to learning. You might learn plumbing from your dad or something. I looked at it as a trade. So it was a convo, but I think you can have convos and until things happen, mm. they don't actually become 
yeah, do you know what I mean? So yeah. I want to know what at what age did he show interest even before you start started taking him to these places or what sort of things were you doing? Because I know me and Sean have had conversations what I've done with my one, uh, but I just wanted to know what. Well, um, a story, I, I took him to my, when he was a newborn, he hadn't been to my mum's and that. So when I first took him around there, in the environment, he was just crying. He wasn't, he wasn't used to anyone. Yeah. But there was a game on the telly and I put his chair in front of the telly and he stopped crying. And that was when he was like proper newborn. Half time, started crying again. <laughs> Second half kicked off, he stopped. Well, what match was this? It was some Liverpool game. <laughs> <laughs> it was, but I think literally just the green, the green pitch and the it, colours just, it and intrigued him. Yeah. It took him from young. Wow. But then when we proper took it, when I started thinking, oh, it was about three. I don't know if Sean remembers. Um, it was about three and it was like, we make footballers by then. Because after that place in Battersea, I found we make footballers online. And what actually drew me to it, it said um, something in the bio or the description said, I think Teddy Sheringham's son went there and a few old pros kids had been there. So I was thinking, okay, that makes sense. Like if you're gonna, yeah. be, you might as well be somewhere where there's a possibility of an opportunity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what actually drew me to be made footballers. Mm, um, interesting. I remember when I first saw Khalil That's what I was gonna three. talk about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, go, go on. I, was gonna, go I don't on, know go if you remember, yeah. but Sean's come up to me and he's going, he's watching him. Mm. And you know, I was there and I was watching Sean and I was thinking, he seems different to the other coaches. Just Sean's mannerisms, and he was a bit more strict with some of the boys. And right. so I was, I was thinking, okay. And then I have seen him speaking to Khalil, and then I saw him. He was looking for me, and he was like, he said he's only three. <laughs> I think Sean thought he was five because he's like, really? he's got to be five to come into Chelsea. And I'm like, oh, and he's three. And Sean's just like, well, just keep him focused. Like every Saturday's football, yeah. and just just keep him at it. Yeah. So for now, I thought, if a Chelsea scout thought he was five and he's three. Yeah. He must be all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then we started going twice a week, two two sessions that we met footballers and slowly started pushing. I think by the time it was about four, he start, I made him start Palace Foundation as well, okay. which was so slowly, interesting. Yeah, because he increased the program yeah. at the time. Right, because he's an early birthday, even with Palace Foundation, they had him playing with what I thought at the time was boys a year older. Right. Football terms, they were two years older. So if he was four, he was an under four. And they were like, some of them would be five, but under sixes. Oh, right. So in my head, they're only a year older in my head to me. Yeah. But they were two years older because they're under six and he's under four. Yeah. So even from then, he's been, he was with boys like two years older than him. Okay. I didn't even realise. So even some of the boys that are signed at Palace now that are two years above him, he was with them at four when they, was, when they were five. Mm. But... So it was, yeah, it's always been, he's always been playing with, we met footballers, he was the youngest, he was always playing with older boys. Yeah. So it's just been the, the, interesting. The, the thing that I remember him about him on the day that I met you and you were, you were very chilled out. I think you, like where we were on the court, there were parents on the edge and some are standing behind the fence, some are standing inside the fence. If I remember you were sitting down and you're kind of like just on your phone, you're sort of looking up a bit, looking down, you know, and then just letting Kill Kill get on with it. And then I then came over and we yeah. sat down and we, and we had the chat and I just said, yeah, he's got something here. Just please keep him coming with us. And then, yeah, you know, it went on. Um, I think the biggest thing at that age, from what I remember, is just that it wasn't necessarily, he's not doing that like step over so much or he's not, he, he wasn't, wasn't super, super technical. Obviously, he's three years old, but he was taking instruction. He was the one who was focused, he was listening, he was he was concentrated kid. And you can really build from that, especially if you've got in a good environment with good coaches. So yeah, I'd love, love to know, how has that happened? Have you, what, 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 was Khalil born a very well-behaved kid? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't think anyone's born well-behaved. Okay. Um, I think children, are literally products of their parents. I'm quite strict, his mum's quite strict. Um, and even for me, football's a very strict environment. I think, um, like little things like, I've seen, you, you see players 
constantly turning late to get dropped, coming late to football, or whatever it is. So I think in life, it's just a life lesson. I've, we've always pushed, from when he was born, whatever he's going to do, you're going to give your all. So that's just, I wouldn't waste my time otherwise. It's just, <laughs> that's, I think that's what it is. So, um, yeah, I just felt that discipline is the foundation of anything for me. That's, that's how I was brought up. Mm. So it's not, even now, it's, it's a work in progress, in progress, sorry. Boys will be boys, isn't it? He's not, he's not a perfect kid. I have to keep a thumb, <laughs> I just have to keep a thumb on him. But it's yeah. literally, anything I see, I don't let it go continue. I'll, I'll literally put a thumb on him straight away. Really? Yeah. So can you give <laughs> some examples of that? So let's go in what he was like with two-year-olds because your one's two. Yeah, my one's two, yeah. And, yeah. And, and you've had some challenges with his behaviour or is he well-behaved? Uh, no, he's he's generally well-behaved. He's mischievous, but he's a two-year-old. So yeah. he's curious and he wants to explore. Um, but like with Perry, yeah, you, you, have, I, you have to keep on top of it. Um, but as soon as you do address it, then you you see him sort of go back to his normal self. Yeah. That's how I find it, and he's and he's fine. But yeah. So, so what might have been some things as a two year old if he's like r jumping up and down on the sofa? Two year old. Or was he was he trying to? I don't, I don't know. I don't have a kid, so I well, don't know what it's like. <laughs> <laughs> what I did do is I, um, I always spoke to. I always treated him like he was an adult. Right. So I never babied him, and my mum used to be like, "Why do you talk to him like that?" and I was like, because well, I'm going to teach him things that aren't going to help him in life from the start. So even talking to them like they're babies, essentially they're going to have to unlearn that at some stage because mm. they're going to have to, that's not how you communicate. Mm. So everything I've kind of, I don't know, because his mum his mum even used to say to me, oh, you got to let him be a kid. And But at the end of the day, what is being a kid? Who decides that they should be doing this or they shouldn't be doing that? I think whatever you get them used to is all they know. So you can't miss something you don't know, if you get what I'm trying to say. Yeah. So I think there's a term, it's used in a it's used in a very bad way, grooming. But I think you're meant to groom your child to represent you in a certain way. Or even with him, I've he's been I've groomed football groomed him from when he was born. Yeah. So literally anything You've got, I always try and find a spin on things to make yeah. them beneficial. Yeah. So let's say for example, that like he'll do is he'll do like a little routine every night. It's not even football based. It's as a guy, I've, I've always trained in the gym, what have you, what have you. When I started training in the gym, there were people that I was training with that I had a little head start because their dad always made them do push ups or what have you, what have you. That wasn't something that was installed in me. So with me, I've looked at my own life and thought, what did, what didn't I get? And try to make sure he's got all of that as well. Mm. So for example, that side, I give him his little routine to do and what have you, what have you. So then one day, for example. Oh, sorry. What exactly is the routine? Um, nothing, mate. Just usual boy stuff. Press ups, sit ups, squats. Just nightly, just nightly strength and conditioning stuff they will do. So how many would he do? How many press ups? And he's eight now. Yeah. So when did he start this routine? And and has it built? Like what? What about, are some of the numbers? It was probably about five or six. So he's five or six when he starts this. Yeah. And it would be right. This is what a press up is. Yeah. Um, but it's just like literally everything, three sets of 10 or what have you, it's little, wow. so you start light. Yeah. Um, right. <laughs> <laughs> but the way I would channel everything, let's say for example, he missed his routine yesterday. And I said, did you do it? Cause he doesn't live with me. So a lot of stuff I'm putting in place is for you to go and do when, whether you're with me or not. If you stay at my mum's, you stay at your mum's, that's your nightly routine, his bedtime's the same. So my mum would say it to me, oh, he, um, he was about four or five and he'd be like, comes to me and says he's got to go to bed <laughs> like, but the way i built everything when i'm going back to the grooming or like conditioning because i know what you mean like yeah just conditioning got, his brain so, that word, so but what i would do is for example if he played today if you got bars off the ball a bit easy i'd say did you do a routine that's why ah. like, so i'd try and you redirect everything back to football or what have you which would and i'd see his little brain and he'd be thinking all right cool and that's just how Khalil's been. That's how he is. That's so cool. So you're linking the process to the result. 
you're yeah. you've got it so he wants to win the football matches he, he if you want to win that's what you this is what you got to do i can't i it's like that saying you bring them to the to the world you can't force them to drink yeah so i just it's all there for you nice for you to go and that's the only thing so where i will be on to him is i'll say it's like i'll say to him i'll talk to him like an adult i'll say look i've given you everything you need yeah I've done my fifty percent. Your fifty percent is to, is to do. Yeah, like, it's not hard for you. Everywhere you go, I say to him, "Look, you get fed. Your clothes are clean. You got boots. Yeah, just go and give your best. I'll give my fifty percent. <laughs> you give yours, sort of thing." What What I find interesting is the fact that even at such a young age, he's doing it off for, off his own back. Yeah, you know, most kids would be like, "Oh, you know, dad's not here or mum's not or whatever," and just won't do it. But he's you know so focused and he's even though when you're not there, he's, he's getting on with it. It's but I do think incredible. it's, cause I work, I've worked him out young. He's so, he wants to win so badly that if you mix anything with that and he thinks it can help him win, he'll do it. That's how he is. And how has that been developed? Um, Winning mentality? I don't know, well, I'd like to say I've got a winning mentality myself and but I wouldn't say it's just direct. His is a bit much because there's there's been times where I've been worried about. It. I think I've even spoke to you, and I'm like, he's he's a bit. I call him certain times. I said he's a bit crazy because <laughs> some things that upset him shouldn't. Like, for example, they had a cup. They they played a cup final. It might have been this year. They've gone one 0 down. He's reacted and got a goal. He scored the goal straight away. Um, they end up winning 2-1 the rest of the kids were celebrating he's got a face on and I didn't even speak to him someone one of the other parents said what's the matter he's gone um, oh I nearly I nearly made them win he's gone but you won <laughs> you know what I mean <laughs> so that's something I always thought could it be too much could it go the other way like so there's been times where because with him sometimes when he gets too emotional his levels drop okay so it's something that i have been trying to balance with him but was at the end of the day i don't want to take it away from him yeah, yeah when it was about six at palace or something i remember he was playing up and he literally had one of them wayne rooney moments where he got taken out and he was crying the coaches were coming on to check it. he said he's fine he went and won back the ball it was literally a 70 30 tackle shouldn't have gone for it He's won it back. He's gone up the other end of the pitch. He's scored and he was, so he's got that in him. Mm. But it's like, I don't want, I didn't want to, along the way, I haven't wanted to break it. But at the same time, I don't want it to go too far. Yeah, spoil the development. Yeah. But I don't know, you just, <laughs> just work with it, innit? But was there anything you did prior to that just to get him, you know, that, that, that winning yeah, like mentality? Playing, like, board games or... or you having little running races with him in the park or... Um... Really, not really, really celebrating wins. Not really, no, oh, yeah. okay. no, because he doesn't. He can. He'll score. He'll score worldy and just jog back. He doesn't celebrate. So, <laughs> so I don't. Know. I can't. I can't answer them sides of him. Yeah. If you get what I'm trying to say, it's just. Yeah. I don't think you can. I can. You can recreate. I think if I had another three or four kids, I don't. They wouldn't be the same. Oh really? Yeah, I think it's just how his. Whatever the con <laughs> however he was made, <laughs> whatever the balance was, I think that's just him. Yeah. But when you talk about there, some of the like pressures, um, has there been times where he's felt the pressure of being involved in academy, in academy football? No, no. I think because he got in so young, I think do you know what it is? I think there's a big difference between going in at reception and year one. I think kids in reception, that year, they still know a lot less. So for example, he he started Arsenal in reception. He'd already been doing Palace Foundation. So club names, they were normal teams to him. He didn't uh -huh. really, he'd done Palace Foundation from four. So I remember on his Arsenal trial day, he'd done really well. And when they were talking to me at the end, he's kind of gone, but dad, Aren't Palace better than Arsenal? And I'm saying, shh. Like, <laughs> but looking back at it, Palace are nowhere at the time, even now, well, it's getting a bit closer now. Mm. But at the time, Palace were nowhere near Arsenal. So he was just ignorant to anything. Mm. So it was just football. So off the back of that, he's then gone Chelsea, 
He's then gone Tottenham, but then even with that, you're seeing the same boys everywhere. So I don't think a badge or anything really meant nothing to him at the time. And I didn't make nothing of it to him. And maybe because we supported Liverpool, we support Liverpool, and when it's not a London club and you're not going there, um. maybe that takes a bit of gloss of it as well. Because when we play, <laughs> it's funny, look, how much years later, we've won Liverpool and he's played against them this year. And I could see for the first quarter, he was he really wanted to impress. Whereas when he was six, that wouldn't have been there. Ah. So I think as as they're getting older and the more they start understanding, I think the pressure builds. Yeah. Like even with his defending work now, I said to him the other day, you look worried about getting nutmeg now. Whereas when he was younger, he was fearless. He didn't care. So if he went through his legs, he'd still get the ball. Mm. He'll go through his legs, he'll turn his back on them, he's got the ball anyway, it doesn't matter. But as you're getting older and you're getting more aware of things, I've watched him defending, but it's like, you don't want to get nutmegged. But I'm saying, even if you get nutmegged, your pace, will you'll keep the ball. Don't worry about it. So it's like, the more they understand, it takes a bit of edge off their fearlessness or mm. or what have you, even at this young age, I think. Is that where the kids are like bantering each other on like nutmegs? Like? Even that, because you do them yourself and you now know, oh, if you nutmeg someone, you lot might laugh or <laughs> what have you, what have yeah, you. Yeah. I think, yeah. That's something I'd be keen to go into about like Khalil's personality. Can you describe Khalil's personality in a bit more detail? Um, he's a boy. He's a boy's boy. He's boisterous. Um, he's very serious, but he's a little joker as that as well. So he's got a bit of. He's, he's a bit of a mixture. Smiley. Yeah, but not in games. Game okay. time, he's not smiley. No. <laughs> He's very, he's very much, he's very serious. Um, which I think is a good thing. Yeah. Um, kind of gets into game game mode. But other than that, no, he's quite smiley. For, and do you know what? He'd shock you because he's got, like, for example, at home, he's got, he's got everything. He's got a PlayStation. He's got whatever all the little kids have got to their play with. He's got a tab. But he'll, he likes to draw. And he's really into, right now he's into Lego, so it's costing me an arm and a leg. These Lego little yeah. bits are costing like 70 quid and up now. Um, but um, yeah, that's his thing. He'd rather do that than go and watch TV or what have you. So he surprised, half the time I wonder where, he, where we got him from because <laughs> it's not like I wasn't like that. Even down to train, I used to hate it. I used to think, oh, if I can do a step over, why is a coach making me do it 10 times? Mm. But him, he's, but I think that's part of the, the brain what the brain washing and what have you that I done because I, I was aware that I didn't enjoy training I used to like matches so I, I proper training I'd let him know that's where you get better that's where it counts mm. but with him I think what's helped is he has a good understanding of things when you talk to him so I find if I explain things to him and he and he gets it and he sees the benefit it will have to him he's kind of good with it if you know what I mean mm. For listeners um, who maybe don't know you, don't know Khalil, um, you know, that term that you said earlier, oh, kids need to be kids. Um, do you think that they might have like fears that, oh, he's just too obsessed with football. This doesn't sound right for a kid. No, but it's a kid's game. <laughs> uh, you play football when you're a kid. So when are you meant to start? When you, if you start as an adult, you won't, be, you won't play football. So, personally, what else is there for a kid to do? He's not going. He's not going on dates. He's <laughs> not, like, what realistically? What else is there for him to do? But play football. If he loves football, he's going to play football, isn't it? <laughs> it's it's true. I mean, it's great to hear that he's got those outlets of drawing of Lego. To to me, that sounds healthy. That he's got something as well that's outside of football. And I know Khalil. He's such a well-rounded, happy kid. But yeah, I think that like that must be considered that, you know, someone is going to be so obsessed with football, um, but like it doesn't uh, impact their childhood or their well-being. Mm -hmm. Is that something you've considered? Um, no, not really, because I just considered it to be a part of it, part okay. of his childhood. Yeah. Because um, football is a part of my childhood. I loved football. I played Sunday League. Um when I looked back at it, I thought if I had some, if, if, 
if my dad was educated enough or my parents knew to push more down that way, I'd have been happier. Yeah. I was a bit of a jack of all trade. I went Trinity school. Yeah. Which I'd done every sport. I was basketball, rugby, hockey. So even now I look at it and think, if all my skills were focused on one sport, I could have been a I could have been a successful sportsman rather than being a jack of all trades and doing nothing. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I can spin a rugby ball with both hands. Mm. I can do, I was good, I could shoot a free free point out at basketball, I could do a lot. But if that was all football based, then my football skill set would have been higher, mm. which would have given me more chance. Mm. So even with football, I think it's a bit of a lottery. You'll see a lot of stats that only this percentage of people make it and what have you, but if you buy half the lottery tickets, you've created your higher ratio of winning. So, so I think that's what it is. You get what you put. You get you get out what you put in with anything. Mm. My my question to you would be because his his program has been so intense from such an early age and whatnot, and he seems to enjoy it. Is it have you ever? Has there ever been a phase where you thought, oh, is this getting a bit too much for him, or is he, you know, is he tired going into school, or or you know anything? There was a stage, but. I literally, lockdown helped me understand it a bit more because look, people will say to me, oh no, a kid, he'll, he performs every training session. and But as a parent, it's like, for example, he's come out of training sessions and he's been told, hey, I was training the day. I said, in his opinion, I said that like, in the coach's opinion, but you didn't do A, B or C. Well, so what happened was, I think lockdown helped me realise that some of the inconsistencies or it was some of the some of it was a traveling so i think with the tiredness and what have you it was not about football hours because development if you do an hours technical or what have you what have you that's not going to have your child tired to go to school the next day driving an hour and a half to somewhere to train training for an hour and a half and driving an hour and a half back that's what i worked out in my head that's what's going to have him tired not the training, it's literally the whole the whole package of what you're doing, isn't it? Could just for for the listeners, how, how much travelling were you doing? So just they get an idea. Um, Before lockdown it was pretty normal for me to drive an hour plus to a session. It was just a done thing. And then how many times a week? So that would be maybe f well, we aren't going to the same place every every session, but some places are closer than other yeah. others. But at least two, three times a week there was sessions which were at least an hour and something away and he'd get home late, still have to go to school in the morning. I think that was more the strain on his on his um, tiredness and what have you, mm. more than training. Because it, look, they go to school every day, they'll run around in the playground. If you give, if you take, let a kid go outside, he'll go and play, he'll go run around. So training isn't gonna kill him for me. Right. But the traveling, I think the traveling does more than we realize. They can get used to the traveling, but then if they're doing that extra traveling, can you still expect the extra couple percent out of them when they're training? Mm. I, I don't know. For me, I thought I'd make it easier for them. And just, so after lockdown, it became apparent if you don't need to do it, you don't, you sh there's no point doing it. I think it was more detrimental than, than beneficial. Mm. Yeah, so uh, give an idea to the listeners of what Khalil's current routine is. Uh, in fact, because we're kind of at the off-season, but let's assume it's September. What's your planned routine for September for Khalil for training? Um, so if he's in at Chelsea, I think two days, two school days a week. Um, I think they're in on Saturday and Sunday as well. Saturday and Sundays. Sun Saturday's a training session, I think. And then Sundays is normally games. So... So it'll be hour and a half on a Tuesday. And I know with Chelsea, that is very much a technical session. Uh, then the Thursday, there'll be another group session. Um, Saturday, group session. I think they do tactical teamwork on that. And then the Sunday matches. So that's a lot of, apart from the Tuesday technical work, that's generally a lot of like team stuff. Yeah, so... You'd have to get some. You'd have to get a day of technical work in, whatever day we worked it out. Of your own, of his yeah, own individual. Of stuff. his own individual stuff. Um, and will you do that with a personal trainer? Will that be you? Or um, he's got a, he's got a one-to-one -one coach he's had since he was about five. 
so you st you'll still see him. Great. So you'll go see him. I always do a bit of fitness and I've always done a bit of fitness. I've always been a bit of a fit person. So from, I think everything's about habits, isn't it? So if you're in good habits, you're used to doing certain things, you'll continue doing them. So there'll always be a day where I'll do a bit of fitness work, but not nothing too much, just to keep him a bit sharp. But the days off, we'll have to get working. We'll have to get work done for me. So if even my process has always been, even if I'm, even at his Chelsea sessions, if I'm watching the sessions and he's struggling with something, if they do that next week, he shouldn't be struggling anymore. So <laughs> we should have worked on it between them, between next time you go back and do it again. So that's why for me, even his training sessions for me to watch are very important because otherwise I, I can't leave it down to a coach to identify everything he needs because he's dealing with, he might have another 10 kids there as well. So he might not see everything or see things the way I see them, if you know what I mean. So that's the important part. I think the days off, you've got to work on whatever they need. I think some people, they limit their kids and they'll go, oh, my boy, he doesn't like it in behind or he likes it to feet. Well, then on day off, go and work on him doing what he don't like. That's, that's my thing. I don't think there should be any limitations on them at this age. So I don't think there's a type of player at eight. I think you can still learn everything in the game. So that's the days off, that's what they're for. Mm. I remember that we've had a conversation that you felt that, especially during the lockdown periods or like you were finding that a lot of parents were getting panicky about the amount of sessions their children were doing, but they were very focused on just taking them here, there and everywhere. A lot of group stuff but not really that focused on individual practice. And maybe the individual practice, like one-to-one -one coaching they're taking them to, it was like very fitness-based sessions. Whereas you've talked about just doing 45 minutes of kicking a ball in the air and just controlling it. Yeah, well even, not even just lockdown, I think people do it when the academies are on. So people will go to four academies a week. That's four, so if that's four school, four out of five school days, you're gonna have games at the weekend them, them four academy sessions are probably going to be pretty similar. You're mm. going a different badge, mm. but a similar session. It might be similar boys. But I think, from what I've realised, I think school and football are similar. There's going to be a syllabus. So each academy are going to have to cover everything anyway. Yeah. So rather than go to four academies, you might as well take a day or two out to work on what the individual actually needs. Because your only group sessions are all going to do the same things. And some things might go unseen because in that sit group situation, he might not have to use his left foot or he might not, so you're not even seeing that he needs work on it or, so I just think, and then with that as well, it's different messages. So if we're going to relate that back to coaches, yeah, he's had his one-to-one -one coach since he was five. His coach has grown with him. So if his coach knows he's done A and B with Khalil, he knows Khalil can do that to a certain standards and we can move on to C and D. If you go to a new coach every month, they're gonna start again with your child every time. Mm -hmm. And you're just wasting your money and your, mm -hmm. and your time and your child's time. Like if he's been working on receiving on the back foot, for example, with that coach for six months, and he goes to that coach, he hasn't seen none of the work with the other coach, he might start receiving on the back foot for another six. So you're wasting six months of development. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the way I kind of see it. I mm -hmm. think I had saw the same issue with the clubs when you're going to different academies, because even, I've done it myself, there was a stage where I thought, oh, I think they should, a certain club might, they should see him in a bit of a higher esteem. And then I thought about it and I thought, no, but when you've done that, it was at that other club. And when you've done that, it was for the other club. This club in particular, you haven't actually done nothing for them. Okay. You know, so why yeah. should they think you're, we don't work off hearsay. Yeah. You've got to put their shirt on and do it. So unless you do that, like, so even for him, the lesson of, you might have done that, that was yesterday, we've got to go again today. Yeah. So I think that helps create, that's what's good though, when they're young, I think, and you're going to different academies. Mm. If you can, as a parent, realise that, right, it might have gone to Arsenal yesterday and had a, um, played a blinder, but we're going Chelsea or Tottenham today and they didn't see that. So you've got to do it again. Mm. You've got to show these coaches now because they weren't there yesterday mm. and they're not going to speak to them. And even if they do, they haven't seen it. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> And that's the thing with football, even at this young age, this is where there could be a bit of pressure on them. But right. 
I think it's about how, as a parent, what you talk about in front of them, what are they, what are they aware of? Because it's crazy. You get people that will see an eight-year-old and they might have heard things through the grapevine and they're going to stand there or sit there and go, okay, let's see it sort of thing. But this is an eight-year-old, but you're going to expect them to, they're not going to, I don't know, um, every time they get the ball, put a top corner. Do you know what I mean? And because they haven't done it this time, it don't now mean they're not good. But it's already getting like that for them at this young age. What are, what are some of the conversations you have with Khalil then after training and or after like... Um, so for me, I that think conversation go at this stage of football, a lot's about your individual battles. So I'm very much on to him to win his individual battles, whether it's going forward or defense. To be honest, the defensive ones make me happier, and I've <laughs> I've always been like that. So a lot of the stuff he does that people like, he doesn't get much of a reaction from me because it's not the skills and that. Yeah, that's all good, but my thing is. No one should beat you. You've got to work harder than everyone else to not get beat. So, for example, to do the stuff you do with the ball, you've got to win it first anyway. Because I'm not... Kids that they say, they don't pass. <laughs> so, that was part of the challenge as well. You've got to go and get the ball yourself. You can't... I'm not going to be a parent that goes, oh, don't worry, son, no one passed you today. Go and get the ball. That's part of the game. So, that was more important to me. So, I think that's how I built him. But I think I've swayed off the question. What was the original question? No, no, no it's fine. It was more praising the the effort and the yeah, that, more than the skill. So no, it's, it's yeah, yeah, completely so it's, fine. Sorry to interrupt and sort yeah. of stick on it, but that was exactly what I was thinking. I wanted to ask the use of language, like what you focused on, because earlier off air we were saying yeah, it was that, always working hard. Yeah, because I've always a manager will always have a player that works hard over a player that's got ability. If you're if a manager knows he's going to get a hundred percent from you today. He'll trust you, he'll play you. So that was always the focus from we started. It's just give you work your hardest. I, I still tell him now, look, I say, leave it on the, I'll, I'll carry you back to the car if you need. <laughs> That's what I say to him. Love it. But you don't need to be able to walk back to the car, leave it on the pitch. Wow. I say, I'll carry you if I have to carry you, don't worry. So that's more the focus. But when he was, we were talking about this, when he was sort of like four, five, and he's naturally a quick boy. So and loves to win so we found success in those little 1v1s we did at our yeah. soccer school he would knock the ball beat a player and then get the win and then we both had a conversation where we said this is good but he's not really doing enough skills yeah he so how did to... you like get the skills into him it was a it was it was a battle because him at a young age was already aware of his attributes so he already knew he was quick and he knew it worked for him. So when you're trying to get him to do, to beat a player with skills, it's almost like his brain was saying, I don't need to. So it's almost like I'd watch him. And this is where I think people have, some people that would have, have known me on the journey might go, oh, he's a bit mad or he's, but it's like, he could run past someone, drop a shoulder and score. And I'm like, what are you doing? Because <laughs> our focus today was to maybe try a step over push or a double combo. Like, we know you can do that. So you come into this session now and just doing what we know you can already do isn't going to improve you. It's not about winning today. It's about having everything in your locker in 10 years. So that's what my, our focus, and that's what I tell him as well. I say, look, it's not about, you. Look, we know you can do that today or day long. What you can't do, you need to be able to do in a year or two. So that's always been my thing with him. And how did he take that? Because when, always... you're when you're talking to him, he takes yeah. it well. Sometimes when he's out there, it's like an automatic yeah. switch. He just wants to win. It goes back to what he knows. But because the way I am, so what I'd done, them days when, for example, it can go well for him, but I'm not going to tell him that. The first thing we'll talk about in the car is you didn't do this and that. So then sometimes, because I'm aware he's got to get some praise, at the end of the convo, I throw in, oh, by the way, that little goal he scored, it was all right. Like, so that's kind of that's kind of how I'd always... Yeah talk to him but it's more about what what wasn't right first because I, you know is I've seen over the years you see a lot and not everything that you see you agree with but it's not your child so you just leave people to it but it's like he will do things like he's he's been good on the there was a stage where he was very good on the ball as in travelling with it but his finishing wasn't great 
So I'd even I say, all that dribbling, you're not going to get a replay without a goal, sort of thing. So there's little details that I've always tried to keep him, just to keep him going, mentality-wise. Because I think if you get, if you become satisfied, then you don't, then you just think, yeah, we're good, and you stop pushing on, if you know yeah. what I mean. You, you mentioned there that you're careful to make sure you throw in some praise. And I think that, I mean, we've seen some, what we probably would judge as some awful parenting in some ways of like parents that are just so pressure driven, so negative. They're like rearing up on the sidelines. Um, they're putting pressure on the wrong things. For, for me, I feel that you've, from knowing you well and, and from the conversations that we've had, you've got such a great relationship with Khalil, which allows you to have conversations like that. Yeah. Well, yeah, we've got a good relationship because I've, I've, he's, he's with dad a lot in it. So, yeah. so yeah, and he's, he's literally just like me. So even if you see a picture of me when I was Khalil's age, you wouldn't know who's who. Wow. <laughs> so everyone, family, they call him my clone. He's like my clone. Wow. Literally, even character, everything. So I think that's helped okay. with the relationship and being able to talk to him in a certain way or put pressure on him when needed. Because even after the pressure side, I think pressure's a part of life and it's a part of football. So I think with anything, the sooner you get people used to something, the more they're going to be able to deal with it. So people might go, oh, don't put pressure on them, they're only a kid. But if you start, if they get pressure now and get used to that, the same thing in 10 years time, pressure will be normal to them. If you sh shelter them until they're 18 and all of a sudden they're in a pressure situation, I believe most people will crumble. That's just my opinion because mm. they're not used to it. Mm. So you can't, it's like if you throw someone, it's like sometimes when I'm training them and you'll make training intense for a purpose because I think I've studied enough football to say, you see Gary Neville used to talk about when United were great and he say, the game on the weekend was easier than our training sessions. So it's literally like, if you, if you take someone to the trenches, term for example, they're going to be used to the trenches. If someone's never been in the trenches, when they go there, they're not going to survive. So essentially, you, I try, I've tried, tried to create situations that he's not going to be shocked by. Wow. So whatever situation he comes up against, if he's shocked by it, it's because I haven't done my part. Yeah. So I should have prepared him forever. So even certain times when we're training, I'll be saying to him, look boy, last minute of the Champions League final. Can you find it? Can yeah. you still have your levels? You're tired, yeah. still beat your man. Still... So it's just putting things in his head, literally, I think. In recent times I've seen Khalil, he's not, he's just focused on his game. You get some kids that, they will go over and look at their parents after they've done a, something good or bad, they've done some play and they want to check, oh, did I get approval from my mum or dad? Have you ever had that problem with Kilo? No, if he scores, if he scores a nice goal, we'll have a look to see if I've seen, if I've, see if I've seen he does. Um, there was a stage where he used, to, he used to look over a lot and I literally said to him, stop looking at me, really? I can't help you. Like, that's what I used to say. I said, everything's in your head. We've, look, because if I ask you anything, if you make a bad decision in a game and I ask you, what should you have done? You always tell me. So, it's, you're looking, I can't help you. It's there. But then even with that, I had to be careful. So, there's times, even now, where I'll withdraw. So, even though I love watching every session and working on every detail and every little thing that matter there'll be a week where I'll go or there'll be like a couple of days where I'll just drop him and leave him. And it's for that purpose because I know when you go into an academy or what have you, I'm not going to be able to help you like at grassroots or what have you. You might not get the same info. So yet again, that's just me preparing him for that. So there was, like I said, there was a stage where I think he used to do it a bit much, but it was like he used to look over for, he wanted his recognition sort of thing. Like, did you see that dad sort of thing? But even that, it can be, I think it can be perceived wrong. So if you don't know me or know him as a character, you might think, oh, he keeps looking at dad. Maybe there's a bit of pressure. Like, but if you don't know him, cause I, I've been, there's been situations before where I've been asked, oh, do you put a bit of pressure on him? And I'd be like, it's him. <laughs> like, it's not me. Because <laughs> yeah. me, more time, I'll tell him, I, the way I put pressure on him is to not react badly. So even down to when we were talking about him learning the skills, 
he would try them sometimes. If they didn't work, he's getting huffy. And that's what would pee me off. Yeah. Because I'd be saying, you're not, you see, the more upset you get, because I used to be the same at football. Once I used to get upset, my head would go. I couldn't even, so see from that point, if I was upset, I couldn't try and do what I was trying to do anyway. Okay. Do you know what I'm trying to say? And I yeah. see that in him. So I'd be like, if you're going to keep getting upset, we won't come anymore. Really? Because at the end of the day, everything's not going to be perfect. If you don't relax, nothing's going to happen for you. So my, I'd be beefing with him to relax. So if I'm looking at him, like, what is wrong with you? Someone looking in might think, oh, he's upset because he didn't beat him. No, I'm upset because he's reacted poorly. So it's the reaction that's not going to get you nowhere in life. Because I'd say to him, no matter how good you are, if a coach sees you react like that, he's going to know he can't count on you. You, you could lose your head at any time in the game. Yeah. And you could lose the game for your team. You could do all the good work. And then because you're emotional, let your team down. Mm. So with me, there's little things, little red flags in football that I've discussed with him to try and get out of him so he understands why it's an issue. Mm. I'm not just going to go, oh, stop doing that. I'm going to let him know. Your coach is going to think you're, un you're no good because look, you might be all good and that when you're happy, but as soon as things don't go well for you, you start getting upset. He can't count on you. So I literally would explain that to him and keep drumming it into him mm. so that he understands if you don't sort that out, you're just wasting your time. No matter how good, that, see how many kickups you can do, no matter how good you get, you're wasting your time. Because mm. I think football mentality goes above skill set, whether we like it or not. I find it interesting um, how you, you always try and relate it back to what it would look like, you know, in the future with a coach. Because um, you do get some parents that, you know, why are you doing that? Stop doing that. But they're not actually explaining and linking it back to football. Yeah. So the kids don't understand. Because, you know, the kid's not going to know. He's yeah. probably seen it on, on TV or, or something like that. But the fact that you do explain it and link it back creates a clear image in their I head. I think people okay. don't give kids enough credibility. I think that's what it is. They think that they won't understand or it's too early. I think that's what they think. At some point, he, he's is probably going to have a bit of period where he will have a dip in form or setback. Be, yeah, there'll be some sort of setback. How have you thought about that or planned for that? Oh, it happens. It, yeah. It's happened already. Okay. <laughs> well, I see it, but other people might not, but it happens. He has stages. So even this year, I've seen something come into him as well this year where it's like, how he applies himself depends on who's in front of him, which is a big problem for me because um, you have to play the same regardless of who's in front of you. You can't look at who's in front of you and go, oh, he's an under six or, or he's an under 11. Because he's an under 11, I'm going to play really well and be really sharp. And then because the boys are younger or your age, you don't play the same. So that's something I've been battling with him this year. So because what's changed as well is the fact that we've signed at Chelsea, it's changed a lot because now you're not going different places all week. So going different places all week was giving him a different environment. Like I said, the coaches haven't seen you this week. You've got to turn up, you've got to perform. Yes, yeah. You're a bit more hungry because you haven't been there since last week. When you go to Chelsea two, three times a week now, let's say Tuesday you have a great session and and you dominate the session, I find now for you to do that again on a Thursday, it's not as easy because your head's telling you, I've done this on Tuesday. Mm. Yeah, and it's like, this is where part of my decision was a struggle because I think at the beginning of the convo, Sean put, you put something on him that I've heard, but I don't like, I don't like to admit it, even the talk of being one of the best in England and all of that because for me, he's only eight. And we talk, I think we talk about age groups and I think here in this country, we put too much on their age in football. So ability wise, I think being the best in your age doesn't matter because I think, I don't know, innit? Because I haven't had a child that's go all the way through the process and I don't know the process completely. But I think to, a, to an extent, you have parents that talk about late birthdays and age and what have you. But in the, at the end of the day, the aim is to play up and a year up or two years up. You should be able to compete with whatever for me in football. We had an England squad that the age ranged probably 10 years. Yeah. And I don't think 
all of a sudden in 10 years time, you're all of a sudden just able to, I think that's, that's built along the way as you're going up. So with him, um, sorry, I've lost it again. What was, what was, <laughs> mind me the question? No, we were, we were planning for like, well, I was asking about what happens when something doesn't go his way. What happens when he loses form or has it? Okay. Yeah. Set? Sorry. So yeah, with the, what I was going back to with the Chelsea group is he's one of the, he's the oldest in the group. Yeah. So to an extent that part of my decision with that process was ability wise, he's one of the top in the group as well. It's not for me, his push all along the way has always been being with people better than him. So he can learn and he's pushed and it's like he could see some, he could see Tom over there do something that he can't do and Khalil will try and do it. Whereas if he's got the highest skill set in a group, he's not going to see anything. It's not going to, it's not helping him. I feel like it helps the the weaker one in the group, if you get what I'm trying to say. Yeah. yeah. So even down to that with the ages and what have you, that's why I don't, because even that it's like, it's a false title. If you're going to say, oh yeah, he's the best in his age group. Okay. But um, football is not about your age group. <laughs> yeah, yeah, You're yeah. going to play with boys five years, 10 yeah. years older. At the end of the day, you could be an 18 year old trying to play with a 30 year old. I, I and no one's going to go, oh, he's, he's 12 years younger. Yeah. You're on the pitch, you're good enough. So for me, some of the, the way that it is all set about is a bit strange for me. That That's just from what I've seen, isn't it? But I suppose what I'm most interested in is like it, it's it what it sounds like it works very well right now with your like essentially quite like tough approach on him mm. um that that works while he's doing really well and he's in great form and he's having yeah. success so at a time will you maybe change your tact a little bit and be more maybe a more nurturing style but if I, he's going through bad form yeah but i do every so what i do every so now and again is I will, in <laughs> I will intentionally put him under pressure right. to see how he reacts because I think it's part of the process. Um, I and create a setback. Yeah, okay. not even create a setback. Well, the thing is, I watched um, Michael Jordan's documentary. Yeah. And me, with sports, I always pick little things from here and there. So even to find little things to niggle at, to challenge him and what have you, mm -hmm. I do that. Mm -hmm. But then at the same time, I'm very much with him that's done now. It's to wipe our mouths and go again. Okay. It's clean slate. Don't worry about it. So a lot of the time I'll tell him, don't worry about it. So even though, I'm, even though there's a pressure situation, within the pressure situation, don't worry. Uh. So if you make a mistake, it's not an issue. So part of the pressure is, remember, if you make a mistake, what do you need to do? React well, fix it, try and recover or do better next time. So within the pressure, there's not pressure if you know what I mean. Yeah. And the pressure for me is never to perform. So the pressure is always to give your all. So, and that's what I was talking about. Remember, I, I think I spoke earlier about being one dimensional in football. I think the reason why Khalil is liked as a player and people will talk about him in a high esteem is because when he has an off day, because he's got different sides to his game, if his feet are off today, you might not notice it as much because he's he's working hard and he's winning the ball. If he's not winning the ball today, he might give you good passing. If he's not doing that, he might give you a good on the ball. So it's like when I'm saying he's had a dip or he hasn't been good today, someone might be only seeing what was good. But I'm seeing the other sides of the game that weren't up to scratch today. Mm. If you get what I'm trying to say. So that part of the journey as well, what keeps a handle on it is they say you're only as good as your last game. So we're only going to work on, you work on everything, but we're only going to focus on what wasn't good last game. So if off the ball weren't good, that needs to be better next game. So if on the ball was good, we won't, I'm not saying we won't still work on it, but it's not going to be a key focus. We're going to work it, work on what wasn't good. Yeah. So it all, try and bring it all together, isn't it? Are That's you, just been my approach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Are you worried that, because it, you know, it has been so full on for him, um, that he might, I don't know, fall fall out of love with it or it's, it all gets too much. Um, is that worry? I've said, I think there's only a few things that should stop him achieving. And that is, you never know what can happen with puberty. Um, 
they get to a stage where they start meeting girls and what have you, and a major injury or something. I can't, you never know what can happen, but I can't see him falling out of love with it. Because even right now, where he's at now, on his, I have to force a rest day. And if he's got nothing to do, he's looking at me like, shouldn't I be doing something? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, so mentally, he's in a good place for it. Because he actually, and again, it was something that I saw and had to learn. So you watch the pros, Ronaldo's another one that know what you can't ignore. He seems like he loves training, the fella. And that's what I got Khalil to do. He loves training. So if he didn't love training, then it might be a bit different. But he proper loves training. I'd, I'd like to talk about social media because this is something that we've seen affect young players. There's, there's been a couple that we've seen in recent times where we, we feel the effects of social media have, have directly affected that player's performance um, and their mental well-being. Um, I noticed with Khalil that other kids were on social media a lot. I mean, I, don't, I still think he doesn't do too much already now, but like under sevens, he hardly did anything. Like, have you had a, an approach to social media? What, what's been your thinking there? There was no real approach. I'm not, I'm not really a social media head myself. Yeah. So it was like, it was something that I didn't even consider. Um, there was a stage where all his teammates had Instagram and that, so I thought I'll involve him. But it's not really my thing to post every move I make and everything I do. Plus, I'm also aware that... Um, <laughs> well, in this football environment, everyone, everyone watches each other, and I'm being, I'll be honest. I'm not trying to give away <laughs> all, everything we do, all our little secrets. I'm not saying that he's someone to copy, because he hasn't done anything yet. But it's a competitive. It's it's a kids' football is very competitive, and I believe it. I I keep, I'll say, always say it, I believe it's an um, individual sport until you make a first team. So I'm not trying to show everyone everything. Um, but yeah, I'm bit, part of it with me as well is, is he hasn't, I say as well, you haven't done nothing to your pundit. So there's nothing to really get carried away with. Even like, I'll go back to that little thing that said whether they're the best in England or what. I've seen a lot change in kids in the year. Kids, yeah. do you know what I mean? So yeah. me, I wouldn't want the stigma of Oh, when he was eight, he was. You know, thought he was this and that, and like, what's that? Like, do you know what I mean? So, it's, if he's still where he is now in ten years' time, even then he might not get get no. You can still get nowhere, because that a lot of other things come into factor. Like, are you? I think you got to be likable. I think you got to be get a bit of luck to get opportunities and all. There's a lot. There's still a lot involved in it. So, for me, I don't look at it. Um. Social, I don't know. For me, social media, people will post things that aren't even realistic. It's like, people will post clips of a game. And that could have been the only thing their kid done for the whole game. So it's not a real reflection on anything. Now, it just did, it didn't, that doesn't, it did, I don't know. I didn't see what, yeah. the, I didn't see what there was to gain from it. Yeah. If you get what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Has he, has he ever put, Asked you those questions like, oh, dad, you know, my friends, you know, I, I want to be more active on. No, nah, really. he's not really. And then another thing as well, I think what's kept him a bit naive to everything is he, Khalil plays, I think, more for our own gratitude. So there's games where I've seen, I saw him play one of his best games ever at Tottenham. Um, I think it was against Norwich. He actually he done he done a rainbow flick and he as it come down he caught the volley, slapped it top corner. When he came off the pitch, he said to me, "Dad, how did I do?" And I'm looking at him like it was actually red. I said I was thinking in my head, "This kid's not right because if you don't, like, that's the best I've seen you play." I said that's yeah. the best I've seen you play, but I was a bit taken back because I wasn't expecting him to still ask me. I thought he'd acknowledge how well he played, but it's still we're still in a stage where. Until we have our discussion, he's not sure about his performance. He's not really happy or he's not really sure about it. 
Yeah. And then even when we have our discussions, it's like, where is that now? Because yesterday after his session, when we were talking, I could see he was proper taking in what I was saying. So it's like, he, he's there and I've seen him, he's thinking and I'm thinking, yeah, that's it's, it's good, isn't it? But that's how he processes. Because yesterday, what the thing was is, they had 1v1 drills and his level started really high. The first one, the first couple we'd done, he was really good. He was really sharp. He'd done a few things that, whoa, you'd want to catch on camera, for example. And then the last few he'd done, a bit of complacency stepped in where it's like he expected to beat the man. Mm. So I've kind of said to him, you stopped, you stopped your process. You had joy, which was good. What you'd done was excellent. It was up here. But... Them last two, you went, you dropped down there because it's like you, I want you to enjoy it, but you, you enjoyed yourself a bit. Maybe you was enjoying yourself a bit too much. After one of them, he actually celebrated, which you don't usually, mm. yeah. So I said, look, you've done a little celebration, that's all fine, but you've got to remember every time you go, it's the same. Mm. Whatever's just happened, mm. it don't matter what's happened, you've got to go again. And he's like, okay, dad, cool. Like, and so that's how we kind of talk about everything. Um, I remember when the day you had the signing day at Chelsea at Stamford Bridge where they'd done the contracts and you were almost thinking of taking him out for training that same day. Yeah. Because you don't like to have him carried away. You want everything to be focused yeah. on, the, on the habits. Back on to reality. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. You're only a result of your habits and the work you put in on a daily basis and, and you're, you've fostered such a great mindset with him. I felt on that day, you know, and you agreed. As no, well, I said to said. him, I actually let him have the day off. But my thing is, if you start with a with a kid from the age of seven or eight or six, whatever age, and what I call it, make excuses. If you say, "Oh, look, we're not going to train today because it's dad's birthday. We're not going to train today because it's mum's birthday. We're not going to train today because it's your but We're forever making an excuse not yeah. to train. Yeah, and it's just teaching them. It's teaching them the wrong things. Yeah. And like you said, I think everything comes down to habits. So during lockdown it was key for me to just keep him in good habits. So we could have got up at 12 every day, done some, done his schoolwork, then gone for an evening session. But we got up at eight every morning. He done some ball work in the morning, half a session in the morning, done his schoolwork. Then he went and we had evening sessions or what have you. So it was like, I still wanted to keep him in a working structure of, you have to go up every day at eight in the morning, yeah. whether you're going to work or school yeah. or what have you. Yeah. Lockdown was for a year. So imagine your child getting into the habit for a year of not training or not getting up at the right time. That could stick with him for five years, yeah. as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I try and do. I try and keep good habits. At the end of the day, we could do all of this and nothing comes from it. He could not make it in football. He could break, anything could happen. But for me, Anything you're doing, if you want to set the right example, you have to give a hundred percent. So you have to do as much as you can do to achieve what you want in it. Tell the story about the hills. Um, <laughs> no, I've had him. I've had him doing hill sprints and challenges. Yeah. Since he was about five or six. Yeah. Um, as he's got older, the challenges have changed or increased because of his ability. But it's literally, he has a thing where it's him against the hill. So it's like, whatever challenge he's given, he'll get like three, three goes. So the aim is to try and win two, two, one. Win two, one, beat the hill twice, you win. But I've been telling him, you, it's not about, it's not about, <laughs> you got to, the aim, if you're two, basically if he's two nil up, the third one counts the most now because you want a clean sweep. You're not happy with two, one. Mm. so that's been my that's my thing with him so little ways just to build a mentality or or hunger that's that's that they're the now kind of things says, that i do with him. i've got to beat the hills like he yeah. has to beat the hills so literally it? and we don't go there we don't even go there all the time sometimes we'll go there we'll go there off season a bit more but if we don't go there for six months and we go back there he'll remember six months ago with the score be like oh yeah it was 2-1 last time and i bet he's looking for yeah he wants yeah. to beat he wants to make it 3-0 or whatever the challenge is that's how I've programmed him. So that side of things I'd say is programming. Because like I said, with kids, I think they're a blank canvas when they're born. Yeah. And um, 
even down to being fearless or what, I think you can build that in a child. I don't think, don't get me wrong, you've got some kids that are born fearless, You like babies, you throw them in the air, <laughs> you catch them, they, they're cool, they like it. But I still think from that point, you can change that. Because yeah. if you then, if your kid then starts walking, every time he falls over and that you run over to him and you go, oh, I don't think he'll continue being fearless. Yeah, yeah 100%. Do you know what I mean? So I think everything we get out of them, we build from, from birth. So we shouldn't be too shocked <laughs> when they're a certain way later down the line. I mean, you do get, always get um, exceptions to rules, in it? There's always yeah. going to be an exception. Not everything's black and white in life, but on a whole, that's what I believe. I mean, the other week, because we've, this is our fourth podcast, fourth one of these episodes. Yeah. Um, the last two, we had like, footballers on and the, the the two guys that like, they're close friends of mine and like i like that they their approach they played like super level one of one of them pro, pro footballer second one just about but we were like they were very much like, no pressure and i think a lot of parents need to hear that because they're they're too much pressure in the wrong areas um, and then we got to the end of the podcast and i commended them and I said love your approach love your approach afterwards Marcelo said to me but that's not your approach why are you praising that because if you had a kid you're not going to behave like that and I am like my opinion if if I had a kid I would probably I would copy very much what your your approach is uh, what what's your sort of feeling on on Khalil uh, Perry's stance um what, what I've done so far is more toward towards what, what you've done with, with Khalil more than the other guys. But I think I said to you, maybe it's because, you know, they've done the journey and they know how tough it is and they know perhaps maybe they can be a bit more relaxed where we maybe haven't done that journey. So, and we you know, we want, it'd be nice for our kids to play football yeah. and, you know, do that as a, as a career. Um, but yeah, I would I would lean more towards this side, I guess, yeah. No one, we don't have we don't know, we don't know. We the don't whole know. thing on this is like, is yeah. there a formula? Exactly. Is there a way? I don't think there's a, any formula that no, guarantees anything. Because no, no. you'll get, all the pros have had different paths, even exactly, down to what yeah. clubs they start at. Some start high, some start low. Um, it's tricky, isn't it? It's finding what, what, what's right for your, for your kid. For the individual. Yeah, for the individual, Because yeah. some of the stuff I do with Khalil, other kids probably wouldn't cope. Some kids are probably shut down and not want to play anymore. That's a question then. Have you done anything where you've gone, oh no, that's not right for him? Um, not really, because he seems to take to most things. Um, and anything that, for me, I've always, I look at things differently, as I said, because anything that's not sort of right for him or it hasn't been or struggled with, my thing is we've got to make it our thing then. So if he was struggling with something or We've got our, the aim is to overcome that because I don't want any weaknesses. I don't want him to. I don't want him to have any weaknesses because, like I said, it's such a competitive sport that you only got you can only give yourself as much opportunity as you give yourself. Even after being a player wise, position wise, if you if you can only play up front and the first team needs a right back, you, they can't shout you. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you can't have any weaknesses. You can't be limited. You've just got to be able to do whatever throw, and yeah. I think that's life that's life if we if, you, if we're gonna go oh we can't do that then you won't have that so but I think it's also important that listeners and um, parents that listen to this and want to try and emulate what they've learned maybe from this conversation they need to understand that Khalil you guys have been doing this since he's been three years old you know two yeah. years old he started that's why it's installed so yeah it's not like they can just suddenly just start going in and right. Oh, we could go and start running up the hills and just go and start. The, even all now, stuff be built. Even now, I get stressed out because I think what I've done so far has been good enough to get him here. Cool. Okay. I haven't done the next steps yet, <laughs> so I don't know what's best for the next steps. Even as they're getting older, um, is what's required going to change and? So it's literally, I've literally, I didn't really have a blueprint. I've literally tweaked things as I've gone along. Yeah. But 
more than more such, it's just a lot of the stuff with him has been based on his personality and my personality combined and the work that we've done. Yeah. Literally. And it's been consistent. That's the thing. So I've had no life. <laughs> I've had probably had no life for like three years, literally. Because when I'm talking about setting good examples, before Khalil was playing football, I used to go out every weekend, all of that. I cannot be waking up. I can't be taking a football the next day tired because I've been out the night before. And then he's that's what he's seeing. So he's going to think, all right, if I've got ball tomorrow, it's all right to go out. Dad goes out. So when he's having an early night, I'm in, he's with me. I'm having, I'm having that early, basically an early night as well. I've still got to be alert to watch him and to make sure everything's still on point for him. His, his, his kit still got to be clean. He's still got to have, fit. I've still got to do all his prep. So my thing with sports as well is I think preparation, like I said earlier, I mean, I'm talking about if they haven't experienced certain things, then they're not prepared for them. Mm. So I think preparation with everything is key. So even now to Khalil, when he's gone to, like I said, if I see something that's not right at an academy, we work on it. So when he's gone to an academy, what have you, he hasn't been able to receive on the back foot already by accident. It's because it's, it's what we've done, <laughs> do you know what I mean? So nothing's by accident. I think some people think things will just happen by accident and they don't. Mm. So even now to him using both feet, there's, I think when you're involved, you can forget what you do along the way. So what's been good is, for example, Snapchat, you'll get memories come up and little things. And my thing is always, when I get the Snapchat memory for like a year ago, I always look at it. Well, actually, no, it's kind of stopped now. But when he was still like under six, seven, and I was getting them from when he was like under six, what have you, I look back and think, oh, I used to think it was good a year ago. <laughs> you don't look great. Like, you look slow, the movement looks slow. But at the time, because it's your child and you're invested, mm. everything looks a lot better to you, I think. So I think that's what, <laughs> that's what happens, isn't it? But um, yeah, no. Um, so as I said, you forget. And then when you see some of the videos, you go, because for example, all right, cool. When he was under six, there was a day he's playing for Walkoutians, which was the feeder club from Remake Footballs. Yeah. Remake Footballers. Yeah. And he used to do a thing with corners, yeah, where he used to put the ball on the wrong side. So when he's taking the corner, the flag's in the way. So if he's taking it on the right, yeah, the yeah, flag's yeah. on his left. And then he just switched and he, like he's lined up to take the corner with his left. And you, I've got a video of it, but you can't hear me. I was shouting at him like, what are you doing? Hmm. Yeah. And he swung the corner with his left. And I was looking, I was puzzled and it was, it was a perfect ball. One of the dads said to me, oh, that's what he's doing. So it's like from that day, um, we went ham. We just went hard on the weak foot because I'm saying, if that's what you can do, we really need to push this and see what we can really do with it. Mm. But I was shocked. But then when I look at videos of him <clears throat> at four years old that we went footballers, he's using both yeah. feet dribbling. Yeah. He's using his left. So it's like, it didn't, it was an accident. So that's why I was like, nothing's an accident. And then when I think about it, Everything I'd done with him from free, mm. we done right foot and left foot. Even if it was minimal, just a pass here or there, we always touched a bit of both. So nothing's been an accident. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I, 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 I can hear the steps you're saying towards like a future like goal. Like um, I had a conversation with Esmond yesterday where he's got a three-year-old and he's been getting frustrated with where his boy is at right now. But he, in the last year, He's been battling with him to organise his routine, to get him to come to training, dress properly on a Monday, dress properly on a Tuesday and like actually doing the whole session. And we were saying all of this is a bonus. The fact you're getting this in now as a three year old will make it easier when he's four to work on the next thing because you've already like yeah dealt with his routine. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. But you know what it is as well? I think what I've seen as well, the years move really quickly and that's what people don't realise. So... And I think what happens is the expectations of from the player as the, as they go up each year, parents don't realise it jumps a lot. Yeah. So it's like under five, they'll look at you and if you're a bit quick and you like to you get around well, that's really good for an under five. I think by under six, you're expected to be a bit more technical or a bit more bit better on the ball. So each year the steps the the expectations increase. So 
what happens is if you want to make excuses for your child at say under five and be like, oh, it's a late birthday, for example, you're all, you're going to stay behind because next year the expectation is going to go up anyway. They're going to expect a bit more and a bit more. So yeah. I think you've really got to do whatever you can as soon as possible with it. I think, mm -hmm. I think kids taking everything early. So things like building a routine for them, if you wait till they're five or six and then they're struggling, they could have started from three. Do you know what I'm trying exactly. to say? Yeah. So by the time they were five, it's already it's already yeah. in place. Yeah. Yeah. No, like I said, um, I, it might sound you probably you mentioned a few times that people were saying that you're a bit crazy or something, whatever. <laughs> Sometimes, um, yeah. But, but you've like, got to be no, obsessed, I think, as well. No, right? I agree. Agree. No, it's it's it's. I, I resonate with so much of what you said, and yeah, I I agree with it. I think um, we, we we're going to have to wrap up there because yeah. we're we're running out of time in the room. Um, but no, Perry, thank you so much for your time. Um, I think that's been very very helpful for a lot of parents listening. Is there any sort of last bits of advice that you'd want to give to to parents? Um, I'd say the best process thing that I've done with him and feedback and what have you, just honesty. So when I'm saying honesty, is don't. I wouldn't overdo the high points. I wouldn't overdo the low, low points either, but you just equally talk about everything with them. Mm. And it doesn't have to, it doesn't, they don't have to be in trouble for things, for example, but just talk about it with them. So if things, cause I think what happens with negative criticism is the problem with it is, it's not even the delivery, it's more the outcome. So if you tell them off for doing something wrong, they're being told off rather than being told something or shown or taught something. So I think that's where it can go a bit left. So I think you can let them know that like, that's not good enough. Like, but you tell them why. So for me, for example, with Khalil, I'll, what I'll go back to, whenever things haven't been good enough for me, I'll explain to him, it's not because you're not, you are not you weren't good enough. I'll say, for example, you didn't lose the ball because you weren't good enough. You've lost it because you didn't plan that process Every, every other time, for example, you knew what school you wanted to do, you planned what you was doing, this time you just took it for granted. So that's why you didn't have success. Mm. So it's more to just to build yep. what yep. to do for next time yep. as opposed to... Such a yeah. growth mindset. I've, what's really resonated with me is the fact that you're, um, you're always very quick to, okay, what's the next part? It's good, but what's the next part? What do we need to do, we need to do next? And when you watch so many of these documentaries of Ronaldo, it's, you know... Um, they'll win a Champions League, but they're already thinking, we need to do it again. Yeah. And for you to do that with Khalil from such a young age, yeah. it's it's amazing. I mean, it's class. It's, it's great. Uh, I resonate. That resonates a lot with me. So you yeah, know, really enjoyable. Absolutely. Yeah, really and enjoyable. Yeah, it's good to get your perspective. Yeah. Hopefully, we will we'll do this again in a few years' time, and yeah, it'll be great. Hopefully, he gets somewhere because, like I said, I don't, I don't. He hasn't done anything yet. Yeah. So. This is it's literally just my process that's been with him. Yeah. I wouldn't say it's right for everyone, I wouldn't say it's whatever, but this is how we've got to where we are. Yeah. And hopefully he can keep we, we can keep getting it right. And, nice and what a great journey it's been so yeah. far, right? So no brilliant. Thanks a lot, Perry. No problems.